Why, hello there, brothers and sisters. How are you all today? I hope all of you are doing well and are blessed in our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Today, beloved, ooh, ooh, might have something for you that you might find very interesting. Please go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Today, uh, also, if you have ribbon markers in your scriptures, today is a day that you're probably going to want to use them. Today, brethren, sisters, we're going to be not really that much of an expository study, but we are going to be examining Psalm 51 in its entirety. And we are going to go verse by verse, and we are going to look within the Pauline epistles how certain things kind of tie together. Now, there are dispensational differences, which we will address in this video, but um, this is stuff that the, uh, the Lord showed me um, going through this, and it was just like one of those wow uh, types of things, okay? But we are going to be reading Psalm 51, like I said, in its entirety, and verse by verse we are going to be going uh, into the New Testament primarily within the Pauline epistles. About 99% of it's going to be within the Pauline epistles, okay? So your your scriptures are going to get a workout today, okay? And very quickly, before we begin this, uh, like I said, turn in um, your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, to Psalm 51, and get your ribbon marker so you can go back there because we're going to be doing point of reference. <laughs> Very quickly, most of you have heard of what is called the sinner's prayer. And most of the times uh, in, when people refer to the sinner's prayer or a sinner's prayer, it's usually one of these step one, step two, step three, repeat after me, say the words, you're in, without any contrition, without any brokenness. Okay, just speaking the words. Um, that is dangerous, totally against that. But is there anything within the scripture that closely, if you want to call it a sinner's prayer, is there, some, is there something in the scriptures that closely resembles something as such? Yes, there is. Psalm 51. And those of you Catholics out there <laughs> who are aware uh, in the Apocrypha of the Prayer of Manessus, interesting to read, yes it is, but it is not inspired scripture like the authorized version of the scriptures are, okay? The closest thing that anyone could probably reasonably say, yeah, that's kind of like a sinner's prayer, it would be Psalm 51. You also have to remember that you just reading Psalm 51, um, uh, trying to apply that to your salvation, just reading it in itself, no, 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 no. Instruction in righteousness, see. Instruction in righteousness. Right? We will see examples of such within Psalm 51, okay? But with that said, now, <clears throat> what I'd like you to do, okay? Get your authorized version of the scriptures, okay? You are expected to follow along. Read Psalm 51 on your own right now. Go ahead, okay? Pause it. Read Psalm 51 in its entirety. And then we'll go, okay? All right. Psalm 51, beginning at verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, 
according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Number one, the appeal to the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And it's an appeal for mercy. Psalm 51 is the result of David um, having an adulterous relationship with Bathsheba, okay, having a child born of that adultery, and also him killing Uriah the Hittite with the sword, okay, not by his own hands, but ordered his own death warrant, okay, so to speak. This is the result, Psalm 51 is because of that. And right away, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Okay, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is very merciful. According unto the according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. David right there is employing the Lord's mercy, asking for forgiveness. Blot out my transgressions, okay? Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 6. Romans chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 6. <clears throat> Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. Hypocritical judgment. And if you were to read Romans chapter 1, you would get the entire context leading in to Romans chapter 2. Someone who is not saved of the church of the living God, it's out there like trying to call a spade a spade. The pot calling the kettle black. Okay? And that happens within the church too. But it's hypocritical judgment, and if you were to continue reading in Romans chapter 2, you would see that the judges is about hypocritical judgment. But let's continue. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgeth them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the rich, riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Repentance. Knowing, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Okay? Turning from your self-righteousness unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Because, look at uh, Psalm 51, verse 1 again. Go there. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Back to Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering? It's called mercy. For not, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, but after thy hardness and impentient heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and judgment of the righteous judgment and revelation, excuse me, of the righteous judgment of God. Impentient, not willing to yield, not willing to bend the knee. Okay? Look at verse 4. Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, <clears throat> but after thy hardness, a hard heart, 
and in penitent heart not willing to bend, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. The righteous judgment of God. The time of Jacob's trouble. The seven year period after the Church of the Living God is resurrected, caught up. Seven years, God is going to be pouring his wrath upon this earth. Seven years. His wrath. He's going to be doing it. <clears throat> Who will render to every man according to his deeds? God is a God of judgment. God is also a God of mercy. God is a God of judgment first and foremost. Today, if you are saved, born again, of the Church of the Living God, your sins are not going to keep you from heaven, but your sins will surely take away from your rewards and your reign within the Millennial Kingdom. And, as you do here in the flesh, recompense comes whether it be good or whether it be evil. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. Now eternally, like I said, if you are saved and of the church of the living God, you're born again, you're going to heaven, no sin is going to keep you from heaven. No. But your position within the millennial reign That's what the works are that are being tried. Just so you know. Okay? <clears throat> Psalm 51, verse 2. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sins. Number one, he's uh, petitioning the Lord for mercy. And number two, verse 2. <clears throat> Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. David is acknowledging that he is a sinner and he's employing for forgiveness in verse 1. And number in verse 2, he's acknowledging that the only one who can wash away his sins, who can cleanse him, is the Lord, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 7. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 7. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. God's blood, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed on the cross is the price paid his blood cleanseth you of all sin. Of all sin. Okay? In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And as we see here in Psalm 51 verse 2, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. David acknowledging that only the Lord can cleanse him. 
And over here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, <clears throat> even the forgiveness of sins. 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 on to verse 20. First Peter chapter 1, verses 8, on to verse 20. Or was it 18? <laughs> One second, brethren. Okay, sorry about that. I misread my notes. It's from verses 18 on to verse 20. First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 20. Beg your pardon. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily, who verily was foreordained, foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. And first John now? First John chapter one verses six on the verse ten. First John chapter one verses six on the verse ten. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And look at this. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin, past, present, and future. If we say we have no sin, you know, oh, I'm not a sinner. I don't need to be saved. Or I'm forgiven. I don't sin anymore. It's a twofold thing. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Right there. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And then when you look at Psalm 51, verse 2 again, Wash me thoroughly from my mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Acknowledging the Lord as the merciful God who can save him, asking for forgiveness, and acknowledging that it's only he who can save and forgive David. See that? Verse 3, for I, for I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 9 on to verse 15. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, referencing sodomites, <clears throat> for men-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, 
according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. <coughs> Beg your pardon. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Of whom I am chief. Verse 3 in Psalm 51 again, For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Acknowledging my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Paul did acknowledge his transgressions and his sins were ever before him as a persecutor of the church of the living God. And verse 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul thought of himself as the chief of sinners. You could say he had conviction, contrition, and sorrow of heart, brokenness. Now, verse 4. <clears throat> verse 4 in Psalm 51. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Against thee, thee only. Now look at what we got here so far. Verse 1, David crying out to the Lord, um, asking him for mercy and asking for forgiveness. Blot out my transgression. Verse 2, he acknowledges that wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Acknowledging and knowing that only the Lord can cleanse him. Verse 3, Acknowledging my transgression, I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Can't hide it. Can't get away from it. You're a sinner. You know it. You know you can't save yourself, and you know you are a sinner. You know you're no good. Against thee, thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Work with me, fingers, come on. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Okay, hold your place here and look at verse 4 again in Psalm 51. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Worldly sorrow can be reckoned and likened as you got caught for something and you're sorry that you got to pay the consequences 
in jail or for whatever it is that you have done. Godly sorrow is against thee, thee only have I sinned. Guess what? You're not saved, church of the living God. You've sinned against God. Your problem is not with men. It's with the Lord himself, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. The difference between godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned. Worldly sorrow. Oh, I got caught. Oh, I got to spend the rest of my life in prison. Godly sorrow. What does it say there? In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. <clears throat> Acts chapter 9. Verses 1 under verse 6. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 under verse 6. And Saul, who would later become Paul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, meaning those of the church of the living God, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem, which would ultimately lead to their death. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? Now look at this verse, verse 5. Look at this. And he said, comma, Who art thou, comma, Lord? And the Lord said, comma, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. You as the church of the living God, you are part of the body of Christ. Okay? You are of his bones, you are of his flesh. That doesn't make you Jesus Christ yourself. No, but you are part of him. Okay? Because you are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, dwelleth within you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. So, when he says here, in verse 4, why persecutest thou me? And Saul going against the church of the living God and uh, uh, dragging the disciples away and putting them in jail. He was attacking the Lord because the disciples are part of Christ, as you and I are of the church of the living God. These wicked coadjutors here, they're attacking the Lord Jesus Christ. They're attacking the Lord Jesus Christ. All these guys, all these heretics, all these fakes, these coadjutors. <laughs> Why persecutest thou me? You're, you're trying to persecute the Lord Jesus Christ. But there again, Saul's reaction, and he said, Who art thou? Comma, Lord, 
And the Lord said unto him, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Keep that in your mind, brethren. These people who attack you, oh yeah, they get up close and personal on you. But they're not attacking you. They're attacking the Lord. Because you represent the true living God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 6, And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Okay? Verse 4 again in Psalm 51. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Against thee, thee only have I sinned. <clears throat> Verse 4 in Acts chapter 9. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 on to verse 33, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 on to verse 33. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it. The church is not a building. It's the people, the called out assembly, called out assembly. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, not a building. Okay? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. The washing of water. By the word, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Now, you're like, well, Brett, that's talking about marriage. But eh, have you? Not, are you not looking at this? Are you not looking at this? You and I, Church of the Living God, we are referred to often as what? The Bride of Christ. Right? Yeah, not your head. Right? Okay. So men... So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. You, husband, you are to love your wife as your own self. Because these two shall be one flesh. Therefore they are neither twain, excuse me, but one. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Let's keep reading. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. Are you seeing the comparison there? Yeah, let's continue. For we are members of his body, <laughs> of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Now here's the summary of it. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. 
These two are one. You know, the Christ and his church, his body. Okay? For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. And, again, when you look at Acts chapter 9, okay, Acts chapter 9, verse 4, And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Let's finish this with verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Reverence her husband. We are the church of the living God, the bride of Christ. How is your reverence for the Lord Jesus Christ? Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2, verses 12 on verse 16, Romans chapter 2, verses 12 on verse 16. <clears throat> For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law, the law, the Levitical law. Okay, the Levitical law on how to keep the Ten Commandments and what to do when you sin, all the offerings and whatnot, okay? The Levitical law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which shew the work of law, uh, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts. The laws of God are written in your hearts, whether you like to admit it or not. Their conscience also bearing witness. And their thoughts, the meanwhile, accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel, the secrets of men. The laws written in every man's heart, whether they want to believe it or not. It's when they reach an age where they know, in Psalm 51, verse 4, Against thee, thee only have I sinned. Usually called the age of accountability. And that differs from, uh, that differs between person, you know, spirit, soul, and body. And also, too, verse 4, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Okay, back to Romans chapter 2. Back to Romans chapter 2, verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Romans chapter 3. Verses 1 under verse 19. Romans chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 19. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there in circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true. But every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness can commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? 
Is God unrighteous to take taketh vengeance? Who taketh vengeance? Excuse me, I speak as a man. You need to be really careful about doing something right the wrong way. Verse 6, God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil, that good may come, whose damnation is just. The end justifies the means. Right, you Jesuit coadjutors? Yeah. What then? Are we better than they? No. In no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Against thee, thee only have I sinned? Verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre, a grave. <clears throat> With their tongues they have used to seat. <laughs> Haven't you, you wicked coadjutors, you wicked Jesuit coadjutors? The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. The whole world is guilty before God, who are not washed in the blood of the Lamb, who are not sealed until the day of redemption. Those who are saved, we're getting out of here. But you who are lost, and even worse, thank your uh, Christian. Well, you are a Christian, aren't you? Yeah. I really doubt there's any fear of God before your eyes. And all, look at verse 19 again. And all the world may become guilty before God. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid, nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law, sin was dead. Ten commandments. 
The Ten Commandments are God's perfect standard. Okay? Under the dispensation of the law, you wanted to be right with God, you had to keep the Ten Commandments. And when you sinned and messed up, Levitical law with all the sacrifices and whatnot and all the ordinances, okay? When you would break one of the law, if you break one part of the law, but yet you're keeping the other ones, you're still guilty. Nobody can keep the Ten Commandments perfectly. And the Ten Commandments were there to show you and me that even at our best state, man altogether is vanity and vexation of spirit. There ain't nothing you can do. No work of the law, you heretical twits. No work of the law that can justify you today in this dispensation. Let's continue. Go to Galatians now. Galatians now, 3, verses 19 on to verse 25. You might be asking, well, Brad, well, why are you talking to us about the law? Because, like I said, the Ten Commandments are God's perfect requirements. And not one of you or I, nobody out there can keep them. Perfectly every single day without messing up once. And if you say, well, I can keep them, you're a liar. Did, what, what, did, uh, what did we look at in 1 John? Huh? What did we look at in 1 John? 1 John chapter 1, verse 10. 1 John chapter 1, verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Nobody can keep the Ten Commandments. Nobody can. Only one could. God manifest in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. So, against thee, thee only have I sinned in Psalm 51, verse 4. You've transgressed the law. You're guilty. Because you have lied. Because you have stolen, because you have cheated. Maybe you are took part in murder, you know, abortion, and so on and so forth. You have coveted. Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 25. Galatians chapter 3. Verses 19 on to verse 25. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. One God, spirit, soul, and body. One God, the Godhead. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the body. Spirit, soul, and body. The Godhead. Okay? Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For look at this. For if there had been a law given which could have given life... Verily, righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, because no one can keep the law. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed referencing dispensational difference. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. 
But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Now we are under the commandments of God in this dispensation, the Pauline epistles, the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, yes. But the difference is you have God living within you. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth you from all sin. You could not keep the law, even if you tried with all your might. And it was added for transgression, so you could see, and I could see, that there's an unrighteous, no, not one. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned. God's perfect commandments. You've broken one, you've broken them all. Hence, against the Lord you have sinned. First John chapter 3, First John chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. First John chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. In who? In Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Holy Ghost, you know, and the Lord is that Spirit. In him is no sin. Now, go back to Psalm 51, verse 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, usually within like the book of First and Second Kings, and also in First and Second Chronicles, you'll see that the king, when a new king is set up, that it will usually some uh, some usually say who the mother is, right? You you look uh, you look at that on your own time. First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. You see who the mother is usually. The mother uh, who was uh, and so and so was his mother. Who is the mother of David? You know who the mother of Solomon was? Bathsheba. Who is the mother of David? Never mentioned. But what else is there to that? Okay. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Now let's go really quickly back to that. Go, go to Romans chapter 5 very quickly. Okay. Romans chapter 5. Verses 12 on to verse 21 is what we're going to be reading. But look at that again. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Romans chapter 5, verses 12 on to verse 21. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. For that all have sinned. Referring to Adam. When his wife gave him of the fruit of the tree and they did eat and their eyes were open and sin came into the Garden of Eden. Sin came into the world because of that. Because they disobeyed the commandment of the Lord. The very first dispensation in the scriptures. The very first dispensation in the scriptures was works not just believe you heretic twits it was works in the very first dispensation and that ended with sin coming into the world and the lord booting them out of the garden of eden and they had to till the ground from whence they came okay you get that let's continue okay for until law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed where there is no law until you are aware that you have sinned against God. What, what do you mean? Right? 
you could say ignorance is bliss, right? <clears throat> Beg your pardon. Let's continue. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the solemnitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Catholics call this original sin. Adam and his sin. That's what the Catholics call this, original sin. But because Adam had sinned as he did, sin, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. If you say you have not sinned, you are a liar. And the truth is not in you. You make God a liar. Because you're, you're born a sinner. It's not until you reach that point in your life when you're against thee, the only have I sinned. Accountability, the age of accountability. Let's continue. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace, unmerited favor of God, and the gift by grace, the gift by belief, no, by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ hath abounded unto many, for there is one mediated between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. For great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Verse 16, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. Christ never sinned. He couldn't. He's God. God can't sin. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, referring to Adam and his sin, which is passed down to every single person, spirit, soul, and body, every single man, that includes mankind, okay? That has passed on to all. Verse 12, for that all have sinned. You, you might not have sinned like Adam, but because we all stem from Adam, we're all sinners. And you personally, me personally, we ain't good. Personal accountability unto the Lord. Against thee, thee only have I sinned. Let's continue. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, Adam, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, the gift of righteousness, shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, Adam. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Jesus Christ, justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, Adam... So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Jesus Christ. 
who died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Moreover, the law entered, that the offense might abound, make you personally aware that you're not good and that you cannot please God. Oh! You want to please God? You got to believe that He is. And a rewarder of those who seek Him diligently. Because without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Let's continue. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? And now, Romans chapter 7, verses 9, on to verse 12. Romans chapter 7, verses 9, on to verse 12. For I was alive without the law once, not aware that you're a sinner, that you ain't good, and that you can't save yourself. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, to keep you from sin, I found to be unto me, to be unto death. Why was it a uh, death unto him? Because he couldn't keep it, and he knew it. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. The law in and of themselves are holy. But guess what, dear friend? You can't keep it. You can't keep it perfectly. You cannot keep God's perfect requirements to save yourself. Nobody can. Now, go back to Psalm 51, verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. And unto man he said, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, verse 28. Had to throw that in there. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, verses 20 under verse 23. Romans chapter 3, verses 20, under verse 23. Therefore, okay, okay, all you nitwit twits, prayer is a work, repentance is a work, your back, um, just go, shut up. Shut up. No one who has the Spirit of, our, of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, living within them, it's going to fall for your nonsense. And if they do, it's going to be for a little while because the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. God our Father living in them is going to yell at them and get them out of that. Okay? But, look at that. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. It's by the law. Works, when works are referenced, it's referring to the works of the law. Guess what, genius? Prayer is not a work. Repentance is not a work. Right back at you there, buddy boy. You're saved by your belief. Not by the man, Christ Jesus. Yes, 
Faith and belief are very important. Amen. But how do you attain to that faith? Through repentance of your self-righteousness. Turning from yourself and turning on to the Lord. Against thee, the only, have I sinned. Acknowledging and knowing that he's the only one who can do it. Not you. Godly sorrow. But you, easy believers and heretics, you're saved by your, your works. Your belief. Who, who really teaches works salvation? Yeah, let's continue. But now, but now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And also notice how we read uh, verses 1 on to verse 19 earlier against thee thee only have I sinned knowing that you're not good that leads up to what these easy believism heretics say is the gospel Romans chapter 10 Romans chapter 10 And they say, this is for the Jews. This is for us specifically in this dispensation. Calling on the name of the Lord crosses dispensational lines. You heretics are only playing off of the people's ignorance of the scriptures. You wicked people. But let's refresh ourselves. Verse 6 in Psalm 51. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. The hidden parts, that there is none righteous, no, not one. That you are a sinner who cannot save yourself. And it says there, And in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Fear the Lord. Romans chapter 10. Verses 1 on to verse 13. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, <laughs> by your belief, right? have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above? Or, who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead? But what saith it? Remember, the law is written in your heart. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. Oh, I, I, I can just feel you guys tensing up, you easy believism heretics, if you can even make it this far. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, God's righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hold your place right there. Against thee, thee only have I sinned. 
<coughs> Verse 1 in Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. There, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. There's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Let, one more time. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Nope. Okay. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble shall call upon that no 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 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and dear friend the way you come to that is by repentance brokenness contrition Contrite. Oh, oh, oh. Don't worry, we're going to get there. Well, okay, now, verse 7 in Psalm 51. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I, and I shall be whiter than snow. Romans 3, 24 on to verse 28 now. See how we do that? <laughs> being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood he took your place he took what you deserve and put it on the cross and shed his blood to cleanse you of your sins. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation to faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness. For the remission of, of sins that are past. Through the forbearance of God. To declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay. But by the law of faith. All right. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Without the deeds of the law. Works being referenced in the Pauline epistles are talking about the Levitical law, the law of Moses, one and the same. But see, you easy believism, wicked devils, you're banking on people's ignorance. 
And because people are uh, proud, blasphemers, boasters, lovers of them own selves, and not lovers of God, you're succeeding. <laughs> you easy believers and heretics are going to have a lot to answer for at the great white throne. God help you. Now verse 8 in Psalm 51. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 unto verse 11. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God, the blessed hope, to be caught up. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, patience. Twice there. Patience. <laughs> how are you how are you doing at that there, brother sister? <laughs> Let's continue. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given on to us. The Holy Ghost is given on to us, and we're sealed. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is thy spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Go look it up. Okay? Make sure you read the context. Okay? Let's continue. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. You're not saved. You're a coadjutor, an infiltrator, a false convert. You're ungodly. Because it's Christ's righteousness, not our own. You have not the love of God in you. You're ungodly. Let's continue. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Time of Jacob's trouble. Seven year period after the church of the living God is resurrected, caught up. Okay? For if, if, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Those who are saved, who came to the Lord broken and contrite, believe on him for what he did for you on, this, on the cross, and in your brokenness and humility, you call on the name of the Lord. Ask him to save you, and he will. See, you have to come to the Lord on his terms, not your own. Taking away repentance. Taking away calling on the name of the Lord. Taking away the changed life after salvation that comes. Take all this away and just leave belief without what, how you get to that. It's heresy and dangerous. And these People here are making false converts by the dozens. And we, the Church of the Living God, are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Isn't that interesting, huh? Now, let's go back to Psalm 51, verse 9. 
Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You're going to notice something here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he, may, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, imputed righteousness. See, you have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwelling within you. God is in you, if you are truly saved and born again. You have his righteousness. Imputed righteousness unto you when you are truly saved and born again. And come to the Lord on his terms, not your own. And see, the love of God, that his righteousness is imputed unto you. Saved sinner. <clears throat> because he dwells within you. Those of us who are truly saved and born again, we at least can grasp that much, that much of imputed righteousness because we have nothing. We have nothing. We have nothing. We came in with nothing. We're going to leave with nothing, but inherit everything. Do you get it? But, okay, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 6 on to verse 14. Okay? And interesting that Galatians deals primarily with the Judaizers trying to get those of the Church of the Living God back under the law. The law, okay? The Levitical law, okay? So when he talks about works within the Pauline epistles, it's talking about the law, the Levitical law, you twits. But see, you guys know that. You, you people who teach that heresy, you know that. That's what makes you even far more dangerous and far more sinister, you wicked people. You wicked people. Galatians chapter 3, verses 6 on to verse 14. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseen, the scripture foreseen, that God would justify the heathen through faith. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. <clears throat> so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are the works of the law, for as many are as of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. <clears throat> but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, imputed righteousness. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Uh, you might be saying, uh, 
Christ wasn't crucified on a tree. No, he was not. But what, uh, back then especially, what were crucifixes, crosses made out of? Wood? Okay, let's continue. That the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the capital S Spirit through faith. So we see the Holy Ghost, which is given to us, that we may that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Remember in Acts chapter two, for it is unto you promises, but since Israel as a nation rejected the gospel. Okay? We Gentiles were grafted in to make them jealous. Okay? You see that? Now, go back to Psalm 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Look at that. Verses 9 and 10. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. Uh, go back now to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 again. Now we're going to be reading verses 17 on to verse 21. Okay? Verses 17 on to verse 21 in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Changed life after salvation. Oh, you don't have to. It's not necessary. It doesn't. You have no love of God. For those of you who dispute the changed life that comes after salvation, which Paul, hello, obviously preached through the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ is that spirit. You have not the love of God. You're not saved. Get, go, go, live it up. Your time is coming. Let's continue. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Your life doesn't belong to you anymore. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Ephesians chapter 2. Oh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. The works being referenced right there. He's referring to the works of the law. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, born again, 
putting on the new man, onto good works. Good works. Not to stay saved, not to save yourself for rewards in heaven, the millennial kingdom, for your rewards. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now go back to Psalm 51, verse 11. This is the dispensational difference. Now we have already looked at the Holy Ghost is given on to us. Okay? By the Spirit that He has given us. Here is the dispensational difference. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Ephesians chapter 1, while we are here, verses 13 and 14. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. You're sealed. You cannot get unsealed. You're going to heaven whether you like it or not. And until, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession. The redemption of the purchased possession is the catching away, the resurrection, our redemption, when we are caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. We're sealed. Okay? Unlike during the dispensation of the law, the Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go, come and go. David was afraid of that. But, now, also while we're in Ephesians, more proof, verses 4, uh, chapter 4, verses 23 and verse 30. And be, uh, Ephesians 4, verses 23 on verse 30. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness in, and true holiness, which, okay, read this, with, read this with me. Come on. Which, after God is created in righteousness and true holiness after God. God's the one doing it, not you. Wherefore, put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't go to bed angry. I've failed at that before. Neither give place to the devil. Watch your walk. Don't leave any doors open for the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. You looking at that? Verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Cast me not away from thy presence of uh, Psalm 51, verse 11. 
Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. First Peter, first Peter, chapter one, verses three under verse nine. First Peter, chapter one, verses three under verse nine. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Rece receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Caught up, it's over. Our redemption. There we are. We're redeemed. Going to go through the judgment seat of Christ. <laughs> okay? But now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Oops. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 on to verse 24. Come on. Work with me. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 on to verse 24. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks for the good, for the bad. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Hey. <laughs> Good luck to you. If you're trying to shut up God who lives within you. And don't want to listen to him. Because remember, he doesn't force you. He doesn't hold a gun to your head. You quenching the spirit? Despise not prophesyings, people speaking to you from the scriptures, from the word of truth. Thy word is truth. Remember, prophets have twofold. Yes, a prophet foretells a future event, uh, future events, but prophesying, speaking the word from the scriptures through the Holy Ghost. Okay? Prove all things. Others? Yourself. Do you examine yourself? Do you judge your own self? According to the scriptures? Yeah, it's scary, isn't it? But it says, prove all, circle all, things. Not just without, but from within. But <clears throat> Hold fast that which is good. Hold fast that which is good. 
Abstain from all appearance of evil. All appearance of evil. Be careful how you walk as the church of the living God. Don't set wicked things before your eyes. Where, where are your hands taking you? Where are your feet taking you? What are you listening to? Do you not know you're being watched constantly? And some of you within your own house. Abstain from all appearance of evil. I have nothing to do with it. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. What's a person? You want, it? you want the definition of a person? Okay, here we go. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For some reason, some people, a lot of people like to say it backwards. Body, soul, and spirit. Spirit, soul, and body. That, that's just a... Sorry. <laughs> but that's what a person is. A spirit, a soul, and body. We, were, we are made in the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. God the Father is the soul. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, is the body. One God. Spirit, soul, and body. Not that hard to figure out. And verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Faithful. Faithful is the Lord. Have you forgotten that? Have you forgotten that? Verse 13 in Psalm 51. Verse 13 in Psalm 51. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Second Timothy. Let's read that again. Then will I pre teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. Come on, fingers, work with me. Come on. Second Timothy chapter four, verses one to verse five. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to verse 5. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Second coming. Okay. Second coming. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Rebuke, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and feelings. <clears throat> with all long suffering and doctrine. You weren't expecting that one, were you? Doctrine. Where do you get doctrine? Pauline epistles. From Ro Romans onto Philemon. Pauline epistles. Doctrine for us today in this dispensation of time we Gentiles. For the time will come, you could say has, <laughs> for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fables. You don't need to repent. Repentance is a work. Prayer is a work. You don't need to call on the name of the Lord. Oh, oh, your life, if your life doesn't change, that doesn't, it, it, it's not going to affect your salvation. Fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry.
2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 14. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 14. Let's refresh our memories. Verse 13 in Psalm 51. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 14. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Especially today. You're saved of the church of the living God. What in the wide world of sports entertainment are you doing falling for all this junk? And compromising. In the first place. Bringing in the mark of the beast system, boy. You want to be part of that? Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, according to the power of God. Who hath saved us? Hath saved us. And called us with unholy calling. Be separate than other than. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. Not according to our works. Works. Our works. The works that would, that would be done according to the law. According to the law. But according to his own purpose and grace. Which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. Who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast. Hold fast. Hold on to it. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. The Holy Ghost. The Lord Jesus Christ God our Father. What does that mean? Your life's going to change. Do something with it. And 2 Timothy 2, verses 1 to 5. See how we do that? See that? Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 5. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. You know, the Lord has given you stuff through the scriptures. Share it! Share it! Don't hoard it to yourself. If the Lord will, share it. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Don't be like the world. <laughs> that he may please him who hath called, chosen him, excuse me, chosen him to be a soldier. 
And if any man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Are you going to commit sin that God may, uh, that grace may abound? What? To be, uh, you, you do something wrong contrary to the scripture, but yet God is glorified through it? Striving lawfully. Don't overcome evil with evil. Overcome evil. Good. Know what I'm saying? Now, verse 14 in Psalm 51. Deliver me from blood guiltness. David was definitely guilty of blood. O oh God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Thy righteousness. Verse 14. Okay, Second Corinthians chapter one. Second Corinthians chapter one. Second Corinthians chapter one, verses eight on to verse twelve. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver us, and doth deliver, excuse me, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, spirit, soul, and body, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience. You got a clean conscience there, friend? I do. What about you? That in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world, and more abundantly to you word. And Ephesians chapter 5 again. Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 13 on to verse 17. Verses 13 on to verse 17. In Ephesians chapter 5. But all things are that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, that sleepest, excuse me, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. What makes manifest is light? Christ will give you light? Christ? See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay? Now, verse 15. Wait for it. Verse 15. In Psalm 51. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. Let's read verse 14 and 15 together now. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness, thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. Ephesians 6, verses 18 on to verse 20. 
Ephesians 6, verses 18 on to verse 20. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You saved and born again of the church of the living God, guess what? You a saint. Okay? And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Verse 15 in Psalm 51 again. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. Okay? Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. We're going to look at one verse here in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Went too far. <laughs> Acts chapter 4. Verse 29. One verse. One verse in Acts chapter 4. And now, verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they... Oh, excuse me. Beg your pardon. They may speak... Thy word. And while we're in the book of Acts, go to Acts chapter 16, verses 4 on to verse 10. Acts chapter 16, verses 4 on to verse 10. Okay? Boldness, that the Lord will give us utterance. The Lord will give us utterance. Hello. The Lord, not flesh. Not our fleshly wisdom. The Lord. Not you, the Lord. Acts chapter 16, verses 4 and verse 10. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone through Phrygia, Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, Lord is that Spirit, uh, forbid these people to go preach the, Holy, uh, preach the word in Asia. After they were come to Mysa, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. The Spirit suffered them not. Being guided by the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, where to go, what to say. And they passing by Mysa came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Now God will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Yes. Yes. That they might come to repentance. Yes. Yes. Sometimes, and you'll experience this within your walk with the Lord, with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, there will be times when our Lord will not have you say something, or when you try to do it, he's just shutting it down on you, shutting it down, going nowhere. Then on reflecting upon it, uh, afterthought, you know, retrospect, so you, the Lord didn't want you to do that. You do, brethren, sisters have to be a little open to being guided by the Lord. Hello. Okay. Now Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians 4 verses 2 on verse 6. 
Colossians 4, verses 2 and verse 6. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Watch your walk. Pray the Lord open the door for you to go through. The doors are closing. They ain't closed yet. And when you force something, who's getting the glory? You do have the love of God in you, right? I know you, brothers and sisters, do. Let's continue. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Salt burns. You eat too much salt, you can get heart, bad heartburn, you know. But you, you pour, you put salt in a wound, it burns. But it also preserves. It also cauterizes. So twofold of salt. It burns and it preserves. Seasoned with salt. That ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. How to end that ye may know how to answer every man. Verse uh, 3, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. You see? You see that? Very quickly, very, very quickly. When I would not back off of my, you know, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, uh, when I would not back off of that and would refuse to let someone who were to, you know, in a conversation that I had with somebody, uh, I said, there's no way that if we would have like a, a scripture study, you can't have anything but the scriptures. And this individual tried to convince me I was wrong, of course. <laughs> um, and he took a cracker and poured, he got two crackers, put them on a plate, and poured salt on the one, trying to use a cute little illustration. It's like, do you want that one that has all the salt on it? Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Salt burns, but it also preserves. Don't you ever compromise. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Now, from verse 16. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Thou, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Philippians chapter 3, verses 3 on to verse 16. Beg your pardon, brethren. Philippians chapter 3, verses 3 on to verse 16. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But, 
What things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Look at verse 6. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Not by works. The works of the law, boy. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And be, and be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God, by faith. Imputed righteousness again, by your faith. When you come to him broken and contrite, you believe on him and humble yourself. Call on the name of the Lord. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. How far? Uh, uh, not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Brethren, sisters, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. How many of you dredge up the past? How many of you relive those old sins that you have been forgiven of? Are any of you stuck there? Might be time to get a move on. Go forward. Know what I'm saying? I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect in heart toward the Lord, the love of God, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Right there. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. You're saved of the church of the living God, and you're messed up in some weird, crazy doctrine or some, uh, some heresy. And if in anything, circle anything, ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal this unto you. God will reveal truth to you to get you out of it. But are you going to listen? Because remember, he ain't forcing you at gunpoint to do anything. Neither is the devil. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule let us mind the same thing. <clears throat> Verse 16 in Psalm 51 again. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou, thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. 
O God, thou wilt not despise. This one now, John. John. Like I told you, 99% of this was going to be within the Pauline epistles. But right now, John chapter 4, verses 19 on to verse 26. John chapter 4, verses 19 on to verse 26. The woman at the well. When the Lord said, go get your husband. She's like, I don't have one. The Lord said, you're right, you've had five husbands. And the guy you're with right now is not your husband. What does he say? In that, in that saidest thou truly. So we read 19 on the verse 26 in John chapter 4. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We, Jesus is Jewish, know what we worship. For salvation is of the Catholic Church. No. Salvation is of the Jews. And remember, Catholicism, even though they're not outwardly saying they're Jewish, but they are saying they are Jews in that they are replacement theology. Beware of that. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. A broken spirit. Sacrifices of... Let's look at that first ourselves. Verse 17 in Psalm 51. The sacrifices of God... The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. A broken spirit. In spirit and in truth. What truth? What truth is that? <laughs> well, uh, what truth is that? Jesus Christ saith in John 16, or John 14, excuse me, John 14, verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The truth, that no one cometh unto the Father but by Jesus Christ, who is the Father, God manifest in the flesh. And also the truth, beloved, dear Dear friend, that you ain't good. That you cannot save yourself. And that your self-righteousness is going to take you straight to hell. Broken and contrite. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Those who are of broken and contrite spirit. And contrite heart, excuse me. You need to be broken before you can be fixed, dear friend. You skip over that and just go to believe. Of course, if you skip over brokenness and go right to believe, of course you're going to contest with calling upon the name of the Lord because calling upon the name of the Lord is the ultimate shoe of humility. Of course. But it makes sense. You easy believism, wicked, heretic devils. Twisting. 
Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Yeah, the devils also believe. Calling on the name of the Lord is for the Jews. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's the ultimate shoe of humility. It shows your brokenness when you call on the name of the Lord. That is, of course, unless you weren't truly broken in the first place. Those of you, that one um, um, unfortunate man in Australia who said that he's called on the Lord all the time and yet he doesn't have assurance of salvation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe because you were never broken in the first place. Let's continue. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. Being broken of your self-righteousness in truth. That Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. A broken and contrite spirit. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee, am he and oh gotta throw this one in there john chapter 8 those of you my brethren sisters you know where i'm going john chapter 8 what verse huh verse 24 john chapter 8 verse 24 i said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Is Jesus Christ totally, completely God? Or is he one of three and the one in the middle died for me? Is he the Father? He claimed to be the father. First Corinthians now. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. Verses 1 on to verse 11. First Corinthians 15 verses 1 on to verse 11. Let's read verse uh, 17 again in Psalm 51. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 on to verse 11. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Like the easy believism heretics. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Kephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present. But some are fallen asleep. That means dead. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Broken spirit and a contrite heart. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I'm not me to call, be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. 
and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. The struggle of those of the Church of the Living God. He knew what he was before he was saved and after he was saved. He knew that he was not good and he counted it all as done. We, so we read in Acts 9 and if you were to keep reading, Saul was broken by all of that. Romans chapter 7, verses 11 under verse 28. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Was, that which, was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it may, might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Once you are aware, there's no going back. Once you are, you know, with much wisdom cometh sorrow. For we know that, that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Sin. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Yes, the law is good. You can't keep it. But it's there to show you your sin. To show you that you can't do it yourself. That you, ain't, you can't. Make yourself right with God because you can't keep the law perfectly. Only the Lord Jesus Christ could and did. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would do for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that, when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law, of, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am! <laughs> Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. You're never going to be sinlessly perfect. Your heart can be perfect toward the Lord, but you yourself will never be sinlessly perfect. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Sorry, go back to Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verse 18. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Dispensational difference there. 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians 12. Oops, oops, excuse me, one second. All right, 
2 Corinthians 12, verses 1 under verse 10. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise, and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think me above that which he seemeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in, in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 5 on to verse 16. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 on to verse 16. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, because he is God the Father, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Shut up, don't complain. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Like I told you, 99% of this was going to be within the Pauline epistles. James chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 21. James chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 21. Do not err, my beloved brethren, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. 
Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive the word, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Thank you, pardon for that. And finally, Revelation chapter 4, verses 8 on to verse 11. Why did God make you? Revelation 4, verses 8 on to verse 11. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And for thy pleasure they are and were created. Because he felt like it. Who are you to reply against God? Why hast thou made me thus? Right? Verse 19. In Psalm 51. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Come on. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and verse 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Prove all things. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 8 on to verse 16. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Beg your pardon, excuse me. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with the eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him, referring to the millennial kingdom. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. We are of his body, of his bones, of his flesh. He cannot deny him himself. If we deny him, he'll deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, 
a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, brethren. Vain and profane babblings. I can think of quite a few offhand who do that who have pro profane and vain babblings. Second Timothy 3, 10 under verse 17. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. First Thessalonians chapter four. We're almost done. First Thessalonians chapter four. Verses one under verse twelve. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received us, received of us how ye ought to walk, and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness, but he therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Which is why they hate you, brother, sister. Because we have the Holy Ghost. We have his Holy Spirit. They don't. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God how to love one another. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Then, uh, verse 19 in Psalm 51, Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Got, got, got time for a little more? Huh? Almost done. Titus. Titus. Titus chapter 2. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, 
that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things shewing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine, shewing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say, say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please, please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation, that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, that's the catching way of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Then will you be pleased with whole burnt offering? These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. And why don't we go ahead and read chapter 3 while we're at it? Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. This, verse 3, belongs nowhere within the church of the living God. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not of works of righteousness, which we have done, referring on to the law, works of righteousness, those are the works of the law. But according to his mercy, he saved us, by grace are ye saved through faith by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Born again, sealed. You have the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, living within you. Which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men, not for salvation, but good works for rewards in heaven. Our millennial kingdom reign. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. A man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted, and sinneth, being condemned of himself. When I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. Bring Zenus the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for 
necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. All, all that are with me salute thee. Greet them that love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. Well, brethren, sisters, as I said at the opening of this video, if you want to find the closest equivalent to a sinner's prayer within Scripture, Psalm 51. And we have seen in this video At the most part, at the basic, simplest part, you have to worship God in spirit and in truth. And you come to God with a broken spirit and a contrite heart. you got to be broken first before you can be fixed. And when you are broken, it's easy to believe on what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. And coming broken... And believing it is easy to call because you are broken. You and I are the church of the living God, truly saved and born again. We know this. And so do the enemies. That's why they're so adamant against it. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I've been working on this for the past two days. I meant to upload this yesterday, but I didn't. Today was the day. So, also, um, uh, it has been shared with me something beautiful um, that um, that was given by someone else, but they shared it with me, and it's like, wow. So, going to be working on that. Um, but anyway, um, may the, our Lord Jesus Christ be magnified. That's all I care about. Um, I love you, and thank you so much to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, that's going to be it. I'm going to go see about getting some dinner. It's 5.02 p.m. my time here where I live. Um... May our Lord Jesus Christ be magnified. That's all that's all it's about. And we love you. We are praying for each and every one of you, our brothers and sisters that we are aware of in Christ. Again, just because we don't speak much doesn't mean that you are forgotten. And forgotten any one of you. Thank you so much for watching if you do. I love you. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father, bless you abundantly. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Bye-bye.